welcome to Exotic Gardening UK, Yorkshire Chris Weekly. It's a pretty rubbish, cold, wet, windy day. So I've just done a quick video, hope you enjoy. Right, this week I thought we'd have a look at the front garden, because it's an area that I don't normally show. The most obvious thing you see in the garden are these yuccas. These have been in the ground exactly two years now. These are yucca rostratas, and they've grown really well straight away. So the huge domes of blue spiky leaves, and they're about, about 1 metre 20, 1 metre 40 high. And they're really wide as they are tall. And they're on this slope, they had loads of grit planted underneath them. And they're doing really, really well, no damage, never been protected. And the whole point of the front garden is that I don't protect it. I don't want to be uh, wrapping things up really, unless it gets extremely cold. And it's evergreen, so it looks good all year round. So there are the yuccas. We've got this Rapidophyllum hysterix, which looks a bit battered. And it's not the greenest as it could be because ideally that should be more shade so this is a contender for being moved this year to a shadier wetter place and it's growing okay it's very slow growing got a couple of leaves coming but probably those two leaves were the only leaves that actually come out this year it is a very slow growing palm also known as a needle palm because of them huge spikes needles on the trunk and then just behind that we've got the Jubea chilensis so that will grow in time to a very big palm very hardy no need to protect that unless it's severely cold like I mentioned behind that's a Canary Island date palm that will grow huge in time unless a cold winter kills it so it's sort of a temporary feature really but if it does well, it will get huge. Here we have the Musabadru that I've not protected and you can see it's growing. New leaves are coming out the top and all these dead leaves will be cleaned up in a month or so time. And this will hopefully grow nice and big this year. Behind that are the waggies. So I've got three waggies, two really good sized ones and a small one further behind. So that's the third smaller waggie down there. The other two further up there. And the date palm, just in front of me, got the big Tetrapanax Perfibra Rex, which is about 1 metre 70, 1 metre 80 tall now. That will grow huge, huge leaves covering this large area. Here we have the Jackyapis Petunii, which we moved from the previous garden, a good solid 2.5 metre trunk. Here we have the Phylostachus Vivax. That's got these beautiful yellow culms. They haven't got very big yet. I have pruned off the lower leaves to reveal the culms. And then the, obviously the leaves at the top of each of the culms up here. As you can see down there, I've got loads of Tetrapanax suckers all over, so I'll pot them up soon. Still got loads of those to pot up. Another view of the front garden with the yucca stratas there. Some crocuses down here. That's another view of the trunk of the Canary Island date palm, which is quite substantial. The suckers either side of it. And then here we have a small Trachycarpus ulcrahensis, which basically will take over in many years' time from the Canary Island date palm and that finally expires in a cold winter. So that's the front garden. I've just got a bit of weeding to do and tidying up. It is just early spring. In summer there will be loads of aeoniums all around here. And if we come round here, there's actually one aeonium that's been out all winter, still hanging on. doesn't look great, but it's still alive. And it's also firmly attached in the ground. So that's the front garden. Now I thought I'd have a, look, a closer look 
are the carnivorous plants and at this time of year they're looking at their worst because it's been the end of winter so we have got a couple of different well, three types of uh, pitcher plant and I've also got some Venus flytraps. Now the Venus flytraps do go completely dormant over winter and die back so they look pretty rubbish. You can see most of the traps have died back but it's not been that severe winter so we do have quite a lot of traps that have survived and even a bit of new growth of a new trap forming there. Obviously there's not much for them to eat in winter but they will catch things that go near the traps. Now the pitcher plants, like this one here, all these old pitcher plants I will cut off at the base. So these are dying back after the frost, cold damage and just from old age. And then you can see down here all the new pitchers will emerge. They've been nice and tall hopefully in this area. Now that one's been, you know, browned off quite a lot. Whereas this one looks really good. And this was bought in the houseplant section of a garden centre with no name. I put it outside and it's not been damaged at all by the frost or the cold, so it's really, really, really hardy. All these pictures are still full of flies and things as well, so they're all working. And there's loads of new growth coming in the centre. And it's grown really big. That was only a small plant and it's covered a much larger area now. And then this final picture, really red, that's not been damaged at all really either by the winter. And that is a native species. We've got the label here. So this is Saracena purpurea, purpurea from the eastern moors of Yorkshire, from the eastern side of the Pennines. That's the old flower stem. So that really doesn't need tidying up. So this one here, just for reference, this is one called Eva. And this, like I said, will be tidied up. You can see there's obviously mosses and things growing in here as well. So various mosses, there's a fern trying to grow in here, so I'll get that out. And yeah, some really nice native moss there as well. So they're in pretty ugly containers at the moment so later on in the season I will pop these up in a much nicer attractive container and move it back into full sun. Now a few weeks ago I showed the indoor hawia or kentia palms, the parlor palms and now I'm outside and these are the hardy parlor palms, these are camadorias radicalis and as you can see totally green, not protected at all of anything this year. And there's a much bigger one here as well. And again, totally undamaged by the cold. The only damage it's had is by the wind damage. There's been no slug damage either. So these palms have sort of very slender trunks like that. and they've remained completely green so that's it's really good. So it's a good palm to try for something different. It's an understory palm. It likes dry shade really. It doesn't want to be too wet or the roots will rot. And there's also this Camadoria microspadix which is this palm here which looks pretty rubbish to be honest. It's, uh, it's not really grown very well. It's like the bamboo palm. It's got a long slender trunk and then most of the leaves have been damaged mechanical damage mainly you can see there's the leaves at the top and there's another one up here as well which looks a little bit better but it's not doing half as well as the radicalis palms down there this week we've had a nice big two ton delivery of mushroom compost which is basically manure and that's really important to put in the garden to feed the plants so they can grow big and lush so this will be incorporated under the bamboos and over the beds have not had a good top up of manure for a year or so so I've got a lot of spreading to do